Today's Bible study and devotional will be finishing the Song of Songs, finishing the book of love poetry between this one certain man and this one certain woman. Um, and in this chapter, uh, it uh, kind of summarizes everything that's been going on, but um, this uh, whole book has had a lot of really kind of cool, passionate uh, metaphor things um, uh, and a reminder that all the metaphors aren't necessarily physical uh, or visual, but um, basically a lot of it, the, the guy and the girl have been looking around at just the world around them and everything is reminding them of their uh, love. But if everything was very kind of uh, visual and not like poetic, it would make for some really weird people. Um, one of the other themes that has been kind of constantly coming through is the Garden of Eden. The man and the woman being naked and vulnerable, yet unified and safe. Uh, that vision of a relationship uh, untainted by sin. And the this whole uh, book just holds on out and holds on to hope. Um, and then, you know, love poetry in the Bible. Uh, it's often uh, seen and understood as this love poetry between like God. It's an allegory for God's love for the people. Um, and it's also a, a little bit of a peek on what that poetry looked like um, during the time. And then we're going to come back to one of the other points that I learned from um, uh, the Bible Project before getting into things. And it's just kind of the conclusion and the whole like kind of point and emphasis of the book uh, is there. So I'll break down what they said it's about uh, after we read and give some of my own uh, personal feelings, interpretations, and what jumps out. So I invite you to open up your Bibles and read along with me as we read through the last chapter of the Song of Songs or Song of Solomon um, in uh, chapter 8. So grab your uh, physical Bibles if you don't have one. I'd love to hook you up with one. Your phone apps with uh, the Bible version or um, the uh, Bible Gateway reading out of the New Living Translation. Um, and yeah, I invite you to join along with me. So without further ado, um, let's jump in to the Song of Songs, chapter 8. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. So, oh yeah, sorry, I always feel like I need to say this. If I say young woman and then start talking, it's the woman who's talking. Um, young man, it's the young man, and the women of Jerusalem is like the, the young woman's friends. All right, let's jump into it. So, oh, I wish you were my brother uh, who nursed at home at my mother's breast. Then I could kiss you no matter who was watching and no one could criticize me. I would bring you to my childhood home and there you would, you would teach me. I would give you spiced wine to drink, my sweet pomegranate wine. Your left arm would be under my head and your right arm would embrace me. Oh, promise me, a woman of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right. The young woman of Jerusalem. Who is this sweeping in from the desert, leaning on her lover, young woman. I aroused you under the apple tree, you uh, where your mother gave you birth, where in the great pain she delivered you. Place me like a seal in your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death, its jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like a fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor rivers can drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. The young, woman, the young woman's brothers. We have a little sister, too young to have breath. What will we do for our sister if someone asks to marry her? If she is a virgin like a wall, we will protect her with a silver tower. But if she is promiscuous like a swinging door, we will block her door with a cedar bar. Young woman, 
I was like a virgin, like a wall. Now my breasts are like towers. When my lover looks at me, he is delighted with what he sees. Solomon has a vineyard at Belhamon, which he leases out to tenant farmers. Each of them pays a thousand pieces of silver for harvesting its fruit. But my vineyard is mine to give, and Solomon needed not pay a thousand pieces of, pieces of silver. But I will give two hundred pieces to those who care for its vineyards. Young man, O oh darling, lingering in the gardens, your companions are fortunate to hear your voice. Let me hear it too, young woman. Come away, my love. Be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. May God add a blessing to the reading of Song of Songs, chapter 8. Um, so my initial reaction, the initial thing that kind of, I think, is stood out here is you have the brothers going, no, you know, you're not allowed to date. You're not allowed to, like, love people. You're not allowed to make your own decisions. And she's like, uh, yeah, God gave me the right to do that. Uh, and I'm going to make my own decisions. So, you know, girl power. Um, and we saw that at the end of Exodus, right? Um, where God was like, okay, now not only are women allowed to own land, which totally revolutionary at the time, but now women can also make choices if they want to enter into a relationship with someone. And, uh, really it could only be challenged for a day. Uh, and that's it. And then, you know, you had to honor her wishes, um, which still isn't as much freedom and everything as there is today, but it's still totally revolutionary. And here you have her standing up against her brothers as her brothers is like, yeah, no, you're not going to do that. Um, and so it's kind of cool that, um, you know, there is that little bit of empowerment going on there. But, um, so I thought that was kind of cool. That's something that definitely jumps out at me. Two, um, you have the, um, all the temptations, everything that's kind of been going on to try to pull them apart from each other. They have found themselves again, and it's like they're going to get ready to start their life anew together, uh, which is also kind of cool. So everything that's bearing down, it doesn't make it sound like everything's going to be easy now that they've found each other, they've been committed to each other. Now the fight is going to be kind of within their families, within this and that and the other, like the battle's going to continue, but they're going to do it together instead of apart like they were doing. So I also think that's kind of encouraging. Um, and uh, then um, I will also kind of read the what the Bible uh, project did. So Bible project is verses 8 to 6 is kind of the conclusion. Um, so 8 to 6 reads, sorry, um, Verses 8, 6 to 14. I'm sorry about that. 6 to 14, which is basically to the whole end. But 6 and 7 is what I'm going to read. Um, so, place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. It's jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love nor can rivers drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. Um, want to put a pin in that. Uh, I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. But here, the Bible Project points out the power and intensity of love, the beautiful and life-giving or the dangerous and destructive sides of love. Uh, the human longing to... Uh, know and to be known is kind of caught up in all of this and then uh, it transcends uh, mysterious and that it is a gift from God um, that's kind of love in a nutshell and that's like the conclusion of a lot of this so you know that it is beautiful and life giving but it can also be dangerous and destructive that we do have this longing to uh, be known and a longing to know and that it is a mysterious and profound gift from God. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, if we have love in our lives, we can be thankful to God for it. Uh, then lastly, the last thing that kind of jumped out at me um, is 
this whole idea of, you know, is Solomon the young man or is Solomon kind of the antagonist? I'm not too sure. But that whole bit of like, and if someone tried to buy love, it'd be completely wasted. Um, which sounds like, yeah, you might, this nobleman that tried to buy me off and everything that was trying to allure me away with money, it was wasted because there was no love. Um, it could be kind of like, look at Solomon and all of his ladies. He's bought so much of them, but he has not love and I still feel sorry for him because he keeps on trying to buy what he cannot buy. Um, and it could be a way of just lifting up, uh, you know, uh, the young man who's like, he's if he's not Solomon and it's someone else, it's someone that he's like, don't compare yourself with all of that. You know, yeah, they might have a ton of wealth, money, and this and that and the other. But what we have is greater than anything that money can buy. Um, so they're all kind of different takes on it, but like, it, it's kind of cool that we can read it in all those different ways. Um, so yeah, what are the takeaways here? <laughs> is one, uh, don't sacrifice love for money in short term gain. I uh, give thanks to the love that you have in your life, whether it's romantic, whether it's parental, whether it's sibling, whether it's friendship. We can thank God for that. Uh, and yeah, it is dangerous and destructive, but it's also beautiful and life giving. Um, and, uh, the, the other thing that I'm now drawing, I'm like, oh yeah, God understands our knowledge to know and to be known. And God's love for us is so intimate because he fully knows us. As we strive to get to know him, he already fully knows us and has come alongside and wants to do life with us, even though he fully knows us. So our longing to know God and how he knows us is so integral as well. Um, so with that, uh, let's pray as we bring our uh, Bible reading of the Song of Songs to an end. Uh, AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the ways that you love us, you guide us, you bless us. Um, and yet you know us, Lord. You fully know us inside and out. You know the words I'm going to say before I say it. And you still love me. You still died for me. You still lived for me, Lord. As you lived for uh, Luke and for Ashley and for Sarah and for Ryan and for everyone that comes and joins me here. Um, presently and in the future. Everyone, uh, you, you love us and you know us so well and so intimately, Lord. You, you're you have such a passion for us. And I thank you for this being in there, that reminder that love can be dangerous and destructive, especially when it's used for selfish desires and gains and to just lure people in for all these false pretenses. But when love is mutual, when love is on both sides, it can be so beautiful and so life-giving. And Lord, it every bit of love that we have in our lives, Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for every, every time we felt love. And I thank you for all the different insights. And now like, you know, reading this and through slowly, I've, I thank you for the knowledge that, um, you know, been able to gain reading through this, um, how you love us and just having a better picture on that. And how I can better love Candace, And how I can better love my friends. And even better love strangers. Uh, thank you, Lord. That all of this is kind of mixed in to this uh, image. And this, this book, Lord. And I thank you for it. And as we go forth into the rest of the weekend, Lord. Help us to seek justice. To do what is right. And to love mercy. And to walk humbly with you, Lord. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. 
Uh, well, thank you guys very much for joining me today. Um, A. Langley, uh, you know, everything I said uh, but what God does definitely applies to you as well. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to like this right now in the actual video. Why? Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys get a chance to get some of that sun in. And um, I'm not 100% what book uh, will be starting again on Monday, but I look forward to it as we continue to read the entire Bible one chapter at a time, one day at a time. Have a great day. God bless.